So you have a great idea and you want a quick and easy way to build fast, reliable apps in 2022. Well, in this video we'll do just that. We'll go through the tools and libraries I consider the best for the job, we'll make some pragmatic decisions and we'll end up building and deploying a full stack app into the cloud. For a bit of context, I started programming as a backend Java developer back in 2010. During the years I migrated to Kotlin and I'm using the Spring framework in my day-to-day -day work to build backend APIs powering a wide range of applications. I've also been involved heavily in front-end development for more than 10 years now and I use both some of the older tools such as jQuery or Backbone and some of the more popular options such as Angular, React or Vue. We'll get to writing some code in just a second, but first let's find out what a pragmatic approach to programming looks like in 2022. First of all, we need to write both the front-end and the back-end code in only one programming language. This narrows things down quite a bit since we are immediately left with only one option, JavaScript. However, maybe your shiny new project will get some traction and you'll have more people working on the same codebase, or maybe you just want to annoy the JavaScript purists. Regardless of the reasoning, in my experience, TypeScript drastically improves both the collaboration and the overall development process, so we'll go with that instead. Second of all, we'll need a UI library or framework. I'm not even going to start comparing all the existing options, so let's just go with the pragmatic decision here. React is, by far, still the most popular library out there. This means it has great tooling, amazing community support and a wide variety of third-party libraries to choose from. You want to be able to build things quickly by reusing existing software and you want to be able to easily hire people to work on your project. Next, we'll need something for the backend. If you are lucky enough to know some hardcore object-oriented Java devs, you'll probably know that you should only have one god and that god is Java since Java is clearly the best and is the most performant and the most reliable and the best tool for the job. So we'll use Next.js paired with Superbase instead. Next.js is a framework built on top of React which comes with a lot of powerful server-side features. Furthermore, we can leverage the fact that it was built by Vercel and deploy our app in the cloud in seconds. Superbase is a Firebase alternative built with open source tools. It is a backend as a service which, in short, means you'll get a reliable authentication solution, access to a relational Postgres database, access to storage and much more with just a few clicks. So now that we have the tech stack in place, we can start coding yet another to-do app. I know, pragmatic devs are really not that original. We'll take a look at the project setup, but we'll do that quickly since the guides are straightforward. Let's create an XJS project using the following npm command, which will also give us TypeScript support out of the box. As a side note, Next.js uses Webpack under the hood to compile and bundle all our code together, but this is abstracted away and, in most cases, you don't even need to worry about this detail. Next, let's jump on the Superbase website, register and create our first project. The Superbase service offers a free tire which should cover all your needs when prototyping and even use the app with low traffic. With this out of the way, we can start to build something. Most real-world apps use some sort of authentication system to identify users and authorize them to create, read, update or delete various resources. Authentication is one of the main services Superbase offers and you have a lot of options here. Day to JWT token based auth and you can use email and password, magic links, phone logins or even various social providers. We'll use magic links in our example since it will also showcase the email sending capabilities of Superbase. I'm quickly jumping into the settings tab to make sure the site URL points to my correct local environment. When the user clicks on the login link he receives in the email, he'll be redirected to this URL. Back in our Next.js project, I'm going to create a login page. Next.js uses a mechanism called file system routing, so by creating a file called login.tsx under the pages folder, we'll get the framework to listen to the slash login path. In here, I'll create a login component extending the next page component and I'm going to create an email, a message and a loading state variable. Then in JSX I'm linking the state to the DOM elements. Of course we don't want to build and style any DOM components from scratch so we'll use a component library. I'm finding and design to be a good mix between simplicity and flexibility so we can simply npm install it in the project. When the user clicks on the login button we'll update the loading state and send the auth request to Superbase. Then based on the results we'll display an appropriate message on the page. Let's take a quick detour and configure Superbase base in our project. First, we'll add a JavaScript client by running the npm install command. Then, we can simply call the create client function and pass the URL and the public key available in the Superbase dashboard. The Superbase auth also returns a session object we can use to figure out if the current user is logged in or not. In a React effect that runs when the page is opened, we can easily redirect to the dashboard page if the user already went through the login process. Next, let's jump into the index.tsx file, which is the root path of our app. Here, we'll do most of our 
our work. Using the same approach from earlier, we'll check the current session. If the user is not logged, we'll redirect him to the login page. Otherwise, we can fetch some of the user data like the email or the member ID and store them for later usage. This is a good time to do another small detour and quickly discuss state in single page applications. React's context API can cover some use cases here, while there are also a wide range of other solutions mostly based on the flux pattern. We'll keep things simple again and we'll add recoil as a dependency. While the context API is enough for our app, enforcing some pattern for data management early in the project development is a good practice. Recoil is built by Facebook and it does the bare minimum to meet the state manager criteria. We'll create a member atom with some defaults and then jump back into the dashboard to populate the store with some session data. Next, back in the Superbase project, we'll create the required database tables for our to-do app to work. I'm enabling row-level security for the tables. This will help us to easily authorize requests and we'll discuss it in more detail in a second. I am creating a task table for the to-do entries and a project table to group the tasks together. Again, Superbase is built on top of Postgres, which is an extremely powerful relational database. You have a lot of flexibility here to define column types, default values, and more. Since the task and the project entities are conceptually linked together, we can also specify this when defining the tables. We'll use Superbase's table link functionality to basically define a foreign key in the task table. This key will keep a reference to the project's table. Next, let's discuss row-level security. This is a very powerful feature that allows us to reliably do authorization directly at the database level. In most cases, your request will be routed through a backend API, which will authorize the user and then reach for the database information. With the row-level security, we can simply remove the backend authorization out of this process. And we'll simply make sure that all database operations are permitted to users having the authorization ID equal to the table's author ID field. With the database tables configured, let's add some service methods in our Next.js project. As a rule of thumb, I'm decoupling anything backend or API related in service methods. In a newly created task service TypeScript file, I'm going to define all database operations we'll need to perform on the task entity. The Superbase client offers a very intuitive interface for this, and the code should be pretty self-explanatory. Remember though, that we are getting security by default, since Postgres will ensure that the author ID is the one performing the request. Following this approach, I'm defining the necessary create, read, update and delete actions for the project entity as well. Back in the dashboard page, we can now fetch the projects from the database, store them in the component state and render them in the page. Please note that we'll go through the React implementation fairly quickly, since this is not really the topic of the video. If you are new to React, however, you can check out my React tutorial I'm linking in the top right corner. Also, all the code in the video is available on GitHub, so check out the description for more useful links. In the dashboard JSX, I'm iterating over the projects I got from the database and rendering them to the DOM. I'm also adding a quick way to show a model and create new projects. One thing I want to mention here is a small library called Immutability Helper, which allows us to perform updates on arrays in an immutable manner. If you are familiar with React, you know that renders are triggered by changes in the state and those updates are detected based on a reference change. Immutability Helper really simplifies this update process for arrays. We are at a point where we can actually see some stuff in the UI. In the project component, there are three actions I want to look at in more detail. First of all, let's call the project service update method to update the color of the project entity. You can see that this is straightforward. All Superbase calls return promises with an object containing an error property we can look at to see if the operation was performed or not. The second implementation we'll work on is the function that will allow us to add a new task in the project. We'll make a call to the database and we'll pass the session member ID for authorization purposes and the project ID to fill in our table's many-to-one relationship I mentioned earlier. Finally, we'll call the onUpdate method to trigger the change in the UI as well. The third method we'll look at is the remove. When this is called, a delete action will be performed in the database. As a reminder, the project entity is linked to the task child entities. Whenever removing a parent entity, you are forced to also remove its children. There are multiple ways to do it. You could perform this action automatically in a cascade or manually remove the kids. I'm doing it in a manual manner since cascading actions can lead to unexpected behavior. Okay, so we've looked at authentication and at database operations. It's time now to check another great feature of Superbase, storage. Again, this is pretty simple to configure. I'm creating a bucket in the storage section of the dashboard and then, following the same approach we had with the database, we'll add some policies to correctly authorize requests based on the session ID. The easiest way to do it is to use an existing template and, inside the bucket, create a folder structure based on the authenticated ID. Back in the Next.js project, in a new service TypeScript file, I'm adding an upload file and a create 
create signed URL method, both relying on the easy-to-use SuperBase client. In the task component, we'll make the required calls to perform the upload. Note that the preview is built based on the session member ID, so that the authorization policies we defined earlier can take effect. Finally, when the task component is rendered and there is a preview available for it, we should display the uploaded image in the page. For this to work, we'll need a signed URL from our storage bucket. This will attach an access key to our request, which is needed since the bucket policy doesn't allow public access on any of its resources. And with this, we are done with the implementation part. The last thing we need to do is to deploy our app in the cloud. As I mentioned earlier, this is extremely easy nowadays with the help of Vercel. All you need to do is to push your code on GitHub and then create a free Vercel account. In the dashboard, you'll be able to link your GitHub account and then simply select the project you want deployed. This pretty much sums it up. Of course, this is a very high level look at the tools you can use in 2022 to simplify your coding process and become a more efficient developer. If you've made it this far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.